Hi, I'm Mark from Whole Life They Love here with our tech guru, Todd. Todd, we've got the Rocket Evolutioni V2s. The yep. Cellini and Giotto? Yep, yep, there's a Cellini. Cellini. The Cellini and the Giotto. Giotto. Yep. <laughs> yep, this one, the only difference between them is this one has straight sides on it. This one has the angles on it. A uh, larger cup tray area or a cup warmer area on this one uh, than you have on there. Other than that, they're pretty much exactly the same. Inside, they're the exact same stuff. Exactly. So it's just a preference as to which look you like better, really. Mm -hmm. So yep. now you're going to show us, we're going to take a look inside. How yep. do we get Let's in do there? Let's do that. First take off this little tray that wraps around the, uh, the cup warmer. Then we'll pull off the uh, reservoir cover. Take off the reservoir. Not that we recommend people go in there, but over time you may want to go in there to replace a vacuum leaf valve or some regular maintenance type things that could happen over time. Uh, then there's four screws here that come out, so we'll just pull these out, and then the whole top comes off. So before we take the cover off, there's a little switch. What's this all about? Okay. What this does, this allows you to switch between water line hookup and the reservoir. That switch actually activates a solenoid valve, which I'll show you inside uh, once we get in there. Okay, now we'll take the top off. After that, we have a little plate here we can remove with a uh, seven millimeter bolts up here. Just loosen those, you don't have to actually pull those off. You pull them out, you could lose them, and that's no fun. And then down at the very bottom here, we have two screws that hold this reservoir holder in place, and we'll take that out. Todd, when we got that out, you noticed a little something here. Okay, well, I have it open. I noticed this is a copper tube here just barely touching the stainless steel. Uh, we always like to check, we always check the machines and prep before we go. We'll look for things like that and just move that away so it doesn't vibrate, make any noise. All right, just a few more bolts to go. What do we got? Yeah, to get the size off, move, I got a seven, seven millimeter bolt over here. Uh, undo this one and you have one over here. You just have to loosen. Don't actually take this apart. That'll make it a lot harder to get it back okay. together later. And on the other side, uh, exactly the same thing. Yeah, that's correct. We have two bolts underneath we have to remove. We have one here and one here. Actually, you don't have to remove them, just loosen them. Makes it easier to put together later. And then identical on the other side. Yep. Okay, and then we pull the bottom out. And then this, did you jiggle this? This will come right out. And, and there we are. We're yep. inside. We're inside. And then uh, the back here also has two bolts on the bottom of this you have to remove to get, at, uh, to get the back off. Quick correction, on the R58 you had to remove these two, it's a do one machine, had to remove the whole bolt to hold it in place. And this one you just have to loosen it, then the back slides out. And when yep. you pull the back off here, you notice you have some wires here. This whole thing, don't pull this rubber piece down or it exposes that and then it's harder to get back on later. Uh, but these wires are attached here. You can actually pull them out over here, it'll come apart so you can get the back off. Look at all that copper. What yeah, do we got? Yeah, there's a lot in here, but you notice everything's nice and neat. Look how square it is. Everything's very uh, uh, well thought out when it goes in here. Well, you have to when you're going to have a, a pump, a boiler, a reservoir all in one spot, along with the commercial size pressure stat. So, yeah, you've got to think it out, and they've done that. Okay, let's talk about the controls. Here's the, the brains of it, which is a control box. Uh, unique to Rocket, so there are no other replacement models out for this. You have to get the ones from Rocket if anything ever goes wrong. Uh, the controls are water fill in the boiler, it's its main function. Uh, over here we have a solenoid valve and another one here. This one hooks up uh, to the water line connection, so if you're using water line, this one gets activated, lets the water in. This one here goes to the reservoir. And that's, you, when you use that little toggle switch I showed before, that hooks up to here, that's how you switch between water line and reservoir. Over here we have another solenoid valve. This is your fill valve for your boiler. Uh, uh, the board sends power to that, opens the valve, turns the pump on, fills the boiler when it gets low on water. Up here we have the pressure stat. This is a Sarai pressure stat, very good quality. That's one of the really thing, nice things we like about Rocket. Uh, they do, do use a good quality pressure stat. And a little, uh, I saw the little yellow cap and come off and you can make your adjustments here. I'll pull it off, just pull it off like this to get in there. And your screwdriver goes on here, clockwise to raise the pressure, counterclockwise to lower the pressure. Over here we have two high limits uh, if anything malfunctions and overheats. These little red buttons will, uh, will pop up and you just push them down to reset it. Kind of like on your turkeys, I want to tell you it's ready. Uh, even though it's not much of a turkey here. Over here we've got the, uh, uh, well, the water sensor. This senses the little probe on that, little metal bar that goes down about so high in the boiler. When the water hits that, it turns the pump off, closes the fill valve. This is where the water reservoir sits. Yeah, yeah, it sits right down under here. And uh, when, you, when you set the water reservoir in, this bar here pushes up a valve, lets the water flow in, 
and then uh, you actually get a little like electric current that falls between this brass bolt and this bar. Uh, that's how the control board knows there's water in there, and it'll let the machine operate. So if you're using distilled water, it's, that's not going to work so well because it doesn't conduct, right? Yeah, if there's no minerals at all, it won't work. Just put a little bit of tap water, like an ounce, and that'll do the job. Over here, you have a vacuum relief tube, and that's open to the atmosphere up high. That'll prevent any uh, issues with water not getting into the boilers. Now, what's that? That's not something I see every day in these machines. Now, it's a little unusual. It's a nice, this is a large particulate filter. Uh, so you don't get any large particles that go in there and we'll get on top like the solenoid valves, uh, valve seats on that, that will cause things to leak. That's a nice idea. All right, so here's our motor and pump. What do we have? Okay, we got an RPM motor. It's pretty standard in the industry. A lot of these uh, machines use those. Uh, Fluido Tech pump. Uh, very good quality pump. Your water comes in the bottom here. Through the pump, comes out over here to your machine. And then in these machines, there's an internal bypass to go between the inlet and the outlet. And that's how you adjust the pressure. On the bottom of the machine, so if you want to adjust the brew pressure on these, it's actually very easy to do. We've done a great job with it. You got this screw here is what you use to adjust the pressure. There's a little lock nut on here. You just loosen that, and you can adjust this pressure right here. Screw it in to raise the pressure, out to lower the pressure. You want to set that for about eight and a half to nine bar, um, and you can play with it, which is fun too. So I'd use the dials on the front to see where I'm at. Correct, exactly. Uh, so it's a good setup. Notice how it kind of it fits in here. It's very tight. They've done a nice job of fitting this in here. And you see it moves a little bit. It's on rubber mounts uh, to keep it quiet. What's all the rubber tubing about here? Okay, well, I mentioned before it's all copper. Well, I guess I lied. There's a little bit of rubber, but it's not any tubing that's any pressure. But this rubber tubing is, uh, first one up here comes from your pressure leaf valve. So if you boil or over pressurize it for some reason, it'll blow off the pressure down through this rubber tubing into the drip tray. Uh, very unique about this machine is it doesn't blow off inside the machine as you go to the drip tray. We like that feature a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, over here we have the OPV valve. Now in a vibration pump machine this is used to control the brew pressure but here it's just a safety. So if you do get water coming out of the, uh, the front of your machine, there's a little opening right below the brew group. If you have water coming out of there, there's an issue, uh, give us a call, let us know and we'll talk about it. Uh, that's kind of the basis of this, but don't adjust the brew pressure using this, like you would on a vibration pump machine. Use the brew pressure control underneath here on the uh, pump, the one that we looked at before, right there. Okay, up here we have, this is the back of the E61 brew group. The beauty about that is the thermal siphon system, which keeps it nice and hot. The hot water comes through here into the brew group, it cools down, it comes out here, back through that tube, down into the bottom of the boiler, back here. So just keep your circling around and around to keep it hot. Heating changing machines like this have a tendency to overheat. So what Rocket has done, uh, they put in a flow restrictor, um, a little bit different, well, a lot of manufacturers use it, but I like the way they've done it. They've really done a job of engineering it to make sure it's the right size. And when I was in Italy talking with them, we went over this, and they showed me exactly what they did, and we'll kind of show you what it's like here. So for the way I understand this, water is constantly circulating. Yep through here. Exactly. To keep your temperature consistent. Consistent. But like I said, with the heating changing machines, the boilers get so hot, I'm not going to get into exactly why, but they can overheat and you get steam coming out of the brew group. Uh, here's a flow restrictor that they put in. Uh, they actually take this and they hammer it right in and it stays in place real nice. So we like that design also by Rocket. Todd, you're always screwing around. What do you got now? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is a vacuum relief valve. I thought we ought to take a little look inside here. So is this see? special? Yeah. Not really special, this is a standard vacuum leaf valve, but little maintenance issues you can happen with these things. So I want to go over that right now. Sure. Uh, take that off, a little Teflon uh, seal on that. Now I'm going to pull this apart using two wrenches off camera here, and then we'll go back on and show the insides. Okay, I've loosened this up. We'll just pull that off. And uh, the vacuum leaf valve is used to release air pressure when the boiler first turns on. And we can get into that later some other time about that. But what I have is here, this is a regular maintenance item. It, over time, this will probably start to leak. It doesn't matter if it's a rocket or what brand it is, a commercial machine. Uh, what happens is the, uh, when the boiler heats up, steam will push this up. When it gets enough vo velocity, it'll push this up like this. And that little rubber there will seal against this Teflon. And if minerals build up on that, you won't have a seal. And here, like a little... So if you have an old machine, stick your ear up to it, listen to it, if you hear that, just either replace it or just get that cleaned off and you'll be good to go. Uh, not a big deal, and it's normal. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the front of the machine. Uh, what we have here, here's your steam knob, controlled your steam wand, no burn steam wand, 
two hole steam tip. It has good pressure. It just unscrews like that. That's little, you got a little gasket there, a uh, little rubber o-ring. And it does a nice job. Over here we have the hot water dispenser. Again, a knob. A lot of steam comes out of this, and we'll show you that. Over here, here's your lever for brewing. You push it up in this position, the middle position, for a little pre-infusion. Allows the water to flow out of the coffee. Do that for as long as you like. You can play around with it, get it just right. Push it up, activates the pump. When you're done, push it down and release the, the water off the brew group uh, down into the drip tray right here. It's a manual three-way valve. You'll hear some machines, they talk about a, a three-way solenoid valve, but this is a manual. Solenoid means electric. On the side here, here's your main power switch. So you won't just turn that on. This green light will come on uh, when everything's in good order to operate. It will flash when you're low on water. Otherwise, it'll be on the green. Uh, you have your uh, seam pressure gauge over here and your brew pressure gauge over here and your drip tray. Also very nice. You know, very well made, stainless steel, polished. And now if you want to hook up to a drain line, you actually pull this little plug out here. Undo that nut right there, the plug will come out and the water will drain from there into this little uh, drip pan here. And this machine does come with all the, the lines for plumbing. Exactly, it has a nice soft flexible tube you can hook up to the bottom of this. And then underneath here, and you get that little piece there, you put your drain line right onto that. And you run that over to your, uh, hopefully an open type drain line, not sealed, like a standpipe uh, with a trap on it. And then over here, you got this little opening right here. Remember the rubber tube you showed in the back? This is where they, they go to this, and that will go into your drip tray. Okay, so it's got a malfunction through this hole into the drip tray. And uh, that's the basics of the machine. So Todd, uh, thanks for taking us through. Uh, overall impressions on these machines? Yeah, very well made machine. I'd give it a good recommendation. You saw the video, you saw what it's about. Uh, very well made. Now it's just a matter of who's going to put this back together again, all these parts and pieces. <laughs> Are you going to do that? I'm going to, well, I'll try. Then I'll probably call you back in, all right? If you need, okay. okay. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Check out all our videos at wholelattelove.com. Whole Latte Love is your source for expert coffee information with more than 200 videos including how-tos, recipes, machine comparisons, maintenance and more. Join us on Facebook for more expert advice and coffee lovers fun.